Hello, my name is Martin Ebner and first of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to give you a short talk. I am currently the head of the Department of Educational Technology at Graz University of Technology. And um, we are, as a Graz, if you don't know Graz, we are located in about 200 kilometers in the south of Vienna, which is our capital in Austria. And uh, we are the second biggest uh, university of technology here in Austria. And uh, therefore, because I'm the head of the department, we are responsible for all e-learning activities at our university. And um, I'm also doing research in the area of uh, e-learning, mobile learning, learning analytics, open education resources for uh, more than 15 years now. And uh, therefore, we are combining research as well as practice. So we have to do, of course, the e-learning as well um, and also to make research about that. Today, uh, my talk will be about MOOCs, what we can do about MOOCs, what is a MOOC and uh, why did I see a very big chance uh, maybe in the area of online education. Yeah, first of all, um, I give you a hint um, to an URL. This is a so-called feedbacker system. So because I'm just uh, online available for you and you're just listening to this video, um, I, you can comment uh, my slides as well. You can ask questions and I will read them afterwards. And uh, maybe I give you also feedback and answers. And so I'm very happy if you are just uh, taking this URL and give me some comments or whatever you would like to write. Um, first of all, the question, what is a MOOC? What uh, then do we understand? Uh, if you are talking about MOOC, it's uh, just shortened for Massive Open Online Courses. This uh, was uh, invented in about uh, 2010. And uh, 2012, um, it became a really a trend or a hype because we have uh, very many popular essays in different newspapers. And um, the massive open online course, so this MOOC, um, is very specific in a, in, a, in a special way. And M would be, for example, for massive. That means we are reaching a very broad audience. We are offering MOOCs uh, on the internet for free and therefore we have very many learners uh, in this MOOC. So this is very different to the university where I have maybe hundreds of learners. Here we are talking maybe about thousands or more than thousands of learners. O, o is uh, the, the time for open. Um, open means uh, that the content, the learning content uh, will be for free available. So you are able to um, just access the course and uh, you can just learn. And it does not uh, mean that you have to pay something. It's without any costs. So the idea is that we are really bringing learning content uh, to the masses. O is clear, seems to be clear. It's an online course in the, uh, really completely online. So you can just sit uh, anywhere you would like to take the course. And the final thing means uh, that we are offering courses, not only learning content. So it's not just a video or just a PDF or a website. It's a course that means we have really a structured process, how we would like to guide you uh, through such a course. That is um, the uh, MOOC platform in Austria. So, uh, we are as um, department, um, uh, we as department are hosting uh, this only as um, MOOC platform in Austria. It's called iMOOCs. And um, it's similar to uh, the very huge platforms of the world from the MIT, the edX, for example, Coursera, or whatever we would like to see. So it's just a MOOC platform. Um, we have done since 2014 about more than 50 MOOCs. And uh, they are just here available for free. And uh, of course, you can also take uh, a course. Um, but most of our courses, uh, because depending on the language we are speaking, is are in German. Yeah, and that is just as a how each MOOC looks like at uh, the iMOOCs platform. So it's uh, the platform itself uh, should is be rather simple for the user. So he should not uh, just uh, learn the platform. So he has to learn the content, for example. So in every course, you have the title of the course, for example. In this case, it's learning the code, for example. Do you like to learn programming with pocket code? It's a similar to Scratch, but it's a mobile version of Scratch, uh, if you'd like to say that. And we have here uh, the units, so each course is divided into different units, mostly in weekly, 
So you get weekly learning content and then you have to get uh, the next learning content the next weekend. Typically, we are running from four to eight weeks. So it's just a typical course. Here you can, of course, find the course content. Here you have news, for example, if I as teacher would like to give some news for the course to the students. If I would like to interact with the students, we have uh, a discussion forum for each MOOC, of course. Here you can uh, download all the files teachers are providing. And uh, this is a, the course description. So why do you this course? What uh, do you learn, for example? And in the end, you get a certificate that you had uh, done all the self-assessments of the course, and you can download that. Um, the course content itself um, is beginning here downstairs and um, so you can see normally you have at least one video for each week mostly two week uh, two videos for example additional material as pdfs powerpoints web links whatever and in the end of every week a kind of self-assessment self-assessment does mean that you you can just reflect what you have learned in this week and um, it's just for your own. And as I mentioned before, if you have done all these self-assessments, um, then you get a certificate of the whole course. And we have also uh, in behind the badge system. That means uh, that you also can get badges, uh, for example, for each self-assessment you have done, though that is the possibility to the certificate also um, different kinds of, of uh, you have done something. Yeah, um, so just to summarize uh, the question, what is a MOOC? A MOOC can be very simply described as an open online course because it's for free and it's just open to all of the world and mostly based uh, on videos. Uh, that it means the main uh, input format for the learners are just videos, but um, maybe we have to talk about that, that videos can be in a different way, of course. This is just not, not only the recording of a talk, so there's a different kind of form of videos, uh, but video is the main input format. Uh, the next thing is that we have, uh, of course, uh, done very many different uh, kind of research activities within MOOCs. Uh, the, what have we learned and what did we know currently about MOOCs? Uh, what can I say something about that? The first thing is MOOCs are very interesting if you would like to reach a very broad audience. Um, so how should I explain? For example, I have a lecturer on my university and I have, I don't know, 20 or 25 uh, students per year. And if I'm going, for example, online, I have uh, maybe thousand or many thousand students who would like to do the same content. So um, if you have the idea, for example, to make a very fast knowledge transfer from the university to schools, to university, to the companies, and you need a very broad audience and it should be very fast, then maybe uh, a MOOC is a very interesting option um, to do that. Uh, uh, so broad audience, you get many people who would maybe are interested in this topic. Um, the next thing is uh, that we have uh, discussed over years is uh, the mythos of dropout. So uh, mostly of the newspaper writing MOOCs uh, are fine with us, but nobody uh, ends the MOOC or did a certificate in the end and they always uh, proponed, postponed or about 5% just uh, completed the course. And um, that's not really true because as I can show you, for example, um, some statistics in back. Uh, this is also just one MOOC, for example. And uh, the first thing is that, uh, for example, for this uh, course, more than 1,000 uh, students have registered. So from this, and that's its interesting part, from this registered students, only more than 460, 470, only, only from them, are even coming at least once in the course. Though that means that very many people in the first run think, oh, I'm just registering because it's free, but they will not enter even the course. Uh, so not the end, the first week, nothing. Uh, so we have nothing. Uh, we, we don't see anything from this person, just the registration. And of course, uh, this is just if you compare it with the lecture hall, just opening the door and going home. So um, I cannot uh, go outside and say, okay, this is uh, these persons are not interested and they are doing nothing. So that's are the active persons, so 460. And uh, from this 460, more than 160 uh, just uh, doing till the end, 
making the certificate. And uh, there is also a group uh, which is interesting, a little bit higher, of course, that people, they have done all the things they have to do, but they never downloaded, for example, the certificate because they are not interested in that. So normally, if we see what is real dropout, we can just uh, talk about this uh, distance. And uh, if you look at that, for example, we have just, we have uh, more than 20 persons um, also, if we are talking about then twenty persons from the uh, twenty percent from the one thousands are just get um, the, the completed the course, but in relation, of course, to the four hundred seventy nine, it's also just fifty percent, and that is a very high uh, thing if you are thinking about uh, normal lectures, for example. So the dropout rate is jumps. Just something, uh, how would you like to interpret the data? And uh, if we are really doing it uh, consequently, then we see that a typical online course uh, just behaves uh, simple uh, as a typical lecture in a very big lecture hall. Then what we also see about activities on the course, that's also very interesting, for example, as this is a, just a statistic about the reading in discussion forums. Um, not the discussing, but how people are reading and uh, be active in discussion forums. And typically see that you have very high percentage of readings in discussion forums on the first day. The new content is uh, available, so in the start of the week. And uh, yes, it's always the week start. And of course, it's a little bit dropping down, but uh, you see very high activities in reading the forum. We have also a typical curve where you can see, for example, doing the self-assessments. So very interesting is uh, that this is just typical for an online course. It behaves always the same. And we always say, uh, till the week four, we have an, an increase and afterwards it's just stable more or less. But it means that people who are doing just the MOOC for four weeks, they will also complete the course in the end. Yeah, and then uh, for example, that is a uh, um, diagram where you can see when people are learning. So uh, typically they are just sleeping between uh, one o'clock and uh, six in the morning and just in the rest of the day they are just working within the MOOC. So we have, uh, there is not, uh, for the whole day learning ha happens always. It's just uh, what you can see in this diagram. Yeah, and then uh, we have the part of the gamification. That is also very interesting, as we introduced um, two years ago, a kind of battery where uh, you can see, for example, wh um, what you have done in the previous week. So, um, for example, if you get this one, then we say you were active for 50% and uh, maybe that this be dangerous to complete the course. It's just an element what you, uh, where you can see what was your activity in the last week and maybe you should perform in this uh, week better, um, for example, to uh, complete the course. And uh, what's a very interesting effect of this I have never seen just a diagram before and afterwards that is that's the, the first time that we have, for example, this, uh, the, the number of completed self-assessment in week one. And after the gamification element in this course, we have more um, people who are doing self-assessments in the second week because they were of officially or obviously motivated uh, by this battery. And so we can see, for example, that uh, just small gamification elements uh, can also work uh, to motivate learners more to do, to go further on with the online course. Yeah, so um, to summarize what we did know about MOOCs is uh, learning happens always at any time, as you see in the diagrams, but um, perhaps not uh, so structured as we expect that. So typically students are coming, doing something going out, logging out, coming again and something like that. So it's a very unstructured process for the students, but uh, it's going further on and it, it, and it happens. Yeah, and uh, finally, um, because as we have done so many MOOCs now, uh, we make a very small research study um, because um, we just recognized that um, not a MOOC is not used as a typical MOOC. So the online learner itself just is coming to our platform and see this offer of the, these different courses. But also I know that many uh, courses have a different story in the background. And there we uh, just uh, tried to cluster and uh, to make an overview uh, about how we can use those MOOCs.
And we have also, as you see here, uh, seven learning and teaching scenarios, different scenarios, how we can use these MOOCs. And uh, that is uh, a very interesting outcome because you can see how flexible we can work with these online resources. The precondition that we can do it um, is that in our, our platform, as well as in another German-speaking platform, we are using completely open educational resources. That is very um, important because that means we have in Austria, for example, also uh, in the same situation, the whole Middle Europe, a very strict copyright law. That means that people are not allowed to use the material um, which they get in a MOOC also to teach them in schools and something like that. Though we, uh, we decided to make every learning content on the uh, MOOC platform as open education resources, means that every object has a Creative Commons license. Um, so you know exactly what you can do. And that has some interesting effects because, for example, you can now use a, one video in different MOOCs, for example, without any uh, problems of the copyright. Yeah, and uh, to understand uh, afterwards uh, the seven different uh, learning scenarios, we have uh, just a, a small legend. This means it's the start of the course, it is the end of the course. This means that it's a kind of face-to-face -face session. This can be a lecture, this can be just a discussion round, whatever. It means only there is a teacher and the students face-to-face. -face. And uh, this is the assessment. This is how you can get um, the final grading, uh, for example, for a course if you use it as a uh, as lecture. And we, of course, have this is a forum. The forum means also we have a discussion forum in active and passive form. This is the MOOC and that LMS would be meaning we are talking about here about a learning management system, not a blue platform, typically as you uh, know it from Moodle or whatever. So type one is um, the conventional MOOC. That is those of, uh, form of MOOCs as we know it from the newspaper, as we maybe expected if you are thinking of MOOC. That is exactly this kind of course. Uh, just put it online. It's, it's pure online. It's just running online for many users and nothing more. Yeah. But um, as I noticed on our platform, that is not uh, the main uh, typical form of a MOOC. It's just that what we are understanding typically from a MOOC. So type 1 is just the conventional MOOC as we know it. The second type is the pre-MOOC. For example, we have also different learning scenarios where teachers um, had their ideas to say, OK, um, I'm doing a MOOC an online course for my students and they have to do this MOOC yeah, as until a typical date. They have maybe afterwards a very small assessment so that I know as teachers they have done the MOOC. And then is this the precondition to come in a face-to-face -face session, for example, a laboratory or something like that. So you have in the front uh, of the typical lecture also a MOOC running just online to prepare students uh, and to give them just um, knowledge about something what you afterwards need yeah, also in your lecture. So that means it's an online course as preparation for a following learning event, whatever this does mean. But this is typically then face-to-face, -face, for example. The type 3 is the blended MOOC. The blended MOOC is um, there where you can, where you integrate the MOOC um, uh, or bring it together with, with it in a typ typical blended learning scenario. So that means I have a face-to-face -face session, then say, okay, the next uh, three weeks you are, for example, doing the MOOCs uh, for three weeks. Then we have another face-to-face -face sessions at the university. Then you have also prepared a MOOC again, and then you have uh, again a face-to-face -face session after Words, maybe an assessment. So the MOOC is just integrated uh, in between several face-to-face -face sessions. Uh, so it doesn't mean how many face-to-face -face sessions you know, it depends on the teacher. But uh, mainly um, here just using the MOOC more or less as uh, just online material. Uh, the type 4 is the in-between MOOC. Um, this is just, um, we have uh, some kind of training sessions, uh, often that mainly in the adult uh, education sector, uh, where, for example, you just uh, come, this is the first day, and you give, you give a longer input, maybe for a day, a workshop for a day, where you just explain your material face-to-face. -face. And then it's a phase just online, where you can deepen your uh, interest and uh, you have some more information about the content. And afterwards, the final is again a workshop for one day, for example, or half a day. And then uh, the whole 
situation uh, gives you the grades, for example. So it's a special form of type 3 because it's also a kind of blended thing, but it has just an opening and a closing event in face-to-face, -face, for example. Type 4, R5, uh, sorry, is the inverse blended MOOC. So it's a new didactical concept um, called inverse blended learning. Um, this um, We've just thought uh, what we can do, as a, how we can more socialize the MOOC. So the main thing of the learning process is, of course, discussing from person, meet each other, discussing about things. And our idea was to bring the MOOC, that are the online course, back again uh, to face-to-face -face situations. And this did we in we're just organizing face-to-face -face events. That means you can be a trainer. You say just, I would like to... Um, to um, make some training sessions, uh, one in a week. Uh, we're just uh, meeting in a room and we're discussing what you have learned in the MOOC, for example. So the MOOC is just running, yeah, and there are different kind of face-to-face -face sessions outside, anywhere where some learners are just meet each other and discussing what they have learned. And uh, uh, maybe they have also problems and they are just discussing about this in a face-to-face -face situation. So this type of MOOC is enriched by face-to-face -face meetings and events. And this can be in very different ways. So we have also face-to-face -face meeting. We are done uh, online in a webinar as well in a cafe, for example. We are just sitting on a table as well as on uh, adult education institutions where they just uh, meet uh, with people and offering this kind of uh, enrichment. Yeah, the type 6 is the flipped MOOC. Uh, the flipped MOOC is just following the... Uh, direct concept of inverted classroom or flipped classroom, for example. So the, the MOOC is just used uh, to give the input at home. So people or students or learners are just going home, just looking at the MOOC and preparing the, so the face-to-face -face situations. And in the face-to-face -face, uh, lectures, we are just exercising with them. We are discussing more with them. We are, have a very high interactivity because the real input giving and the lecturing just happens uh, in the online course. That is the idea of the flipped MOOC, for example. So have really, you have on the one side the online sessions and as well regular um, sessions uh, in face-to-face -face situations. Yeah, and the final one is the lecture MOOC uh, because uh, we did this again because it's a little, uh, rather typical for uh, MOOCs we are using at the university itself. Um, there we have the situation, we have the MOOC maybe also separated uh, with face-to-face -face lecture. So sometimes I say to my students, you have to come, for example, and I give you a face-to-face -face lecture. And then it's again the MOOC. And a very typical thing for a lecture MOOC is that you have um, on, in parallel um, again, uh, for example, a learning management system where all the things are happening. For example, you have to say they have to, done, to do some exercises, they have to discuss something or something like that. And the problem is that I cannot do that in the MOOC, for example, because the grading of the students must be in a separated system because of the of different regulations we have, for example. So you never see that, uh, for example, this MOOC is just used also in a typical lecture at a university. And of course, in the end, you can also assess uh, this um, MOOC. Yeah, so uh, the final thing is also um, if, and that is uh, the precondition I mentioned before, uh, the content is also available as open education resource, the exchange in between other institutions and the usage uh, of external organizations becomes rather simple and also legal. And uh, we, what we see is that open educational resources works as a kind of motor um, to be so such flexible with this kind of, sort of online content uh, as we can do it with the MOOCs. And um, OER MOOCs as a facilitated access to education, that is very important. So we can, on the one side, provide uh, this content also to the public. So we have two effects. We are just teaching our students, we are lecturing, and we have also the, uh, the chance to give this material to the public, to people who are interested in that and would like to learn that, as well to other educational institutions who are just maybe offering a similar course. And we can use all these resources um, to learn something. And of course, it's in a very innovative way. That is uh, the interesting thing about it. And it allows, as you see, new forms of teaching and learning. So we have so many different scenarios that we today can say, okay, we can do so many things uh, with all this online content. Yeah. So 
I like to conclude uh, is that MOOCs, or even if you say it's not massive, then it's an open online course, for example, uh, for us as uh, um, research in this uh, field are not really a trend or a hype. They are a consistent in the logical further development of teaching and help uh, us very uh, deeply to make educational content also accessible, so not also within our uh, context of the university, but also worldwide to people who are just interested to learn something new. Yeah, that is the end of the talk. I would like to thank you very much for your uh, attention. Um, if you would like to contact me, just uh, take my email address, just take Twitter, or you can also reach me on Facebook or on Feedbacker channel. Uh, how would you like to contact me? Thanks a lot for your attention.